All right, so it's uh, quarter seven on Saturday, and we get ready to make our trek down Pennsylvania. So it's about a seven-hour drive. I get to drive it. You guys get to skip it. And, of course, we've been in crazy drought lately. You know, it hasn't been raining for months on end, and the one weekend I go to do this, it's pouring out, and it's supposed to rain all weekend. But, you know, it's the only time that we both have to do this, so we got to get it done. So uh, we're going to go down there. We're going to pick up the new machine. And on our way back, uh, we're gonna. I'm probably gonna stay. I'm gonna stay down there one night, and then on the way back, uh, I'm gonna stop by Brad's shop and see what he's up to. So this will also be kind of a test for this truck. This is the longest that I've driven it, or the farthest that I've driven it. Uh, I think I took I took this to to the Cape. That's the farthest that this has been. It's a relatively new truck. I got it in uh, in in April. Um, when you work for a good company, they give you company leases. So. We're gonna put uh, the address in the lady in the box here, and she's gonna tell us where to go. So first, let's see, I'm all newfangled gadgetry here. We're gonna, so on audio, navigation, info. Info. Oh, I got 2,600 miles on the truck, so fuel economy, we will reset that somehow. Reset. Tire pressure, oil, and fuel range trip. That's what we want. Reset. Uh, turn that back to the phone. And. Uh, Okay, so we're going to put our uh, address of where we're going and the lady in the box, and we shall see you in seven hours. Seven hours of this is going to suck. I hope it stops till that's up. Well, and make a quick old pit stop for the coffee. Can't go anywhere without that. This is Massachusetts, so we drink Dunkin' like every normal person should. Well, we're about... Uh, just shy of three hours into our journey, and we're somewhere in Connecticut. We had just passed over the Housatonic River, according to the sign I just passed. No idea where that is, but it's in Connecticut somewhere. And, uh, meh. Make a decent time. We're just about halfway through our trip. There, uh, I got some uh, GW Bridge loneliness in front of us here. Been stuck in traffic for the past, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. I just noticed about the uh, GPS here. I think it's topographical when you're near a city. It even shows a bridge. Snazzy. So we got uh, about two and a half hours more, 120 miles, and um, just on pass on the outskirts of Philly now. Just got off the New Jersey Turnpike onto the Philly onto the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Um, almost died on the Jersey Turnpike right at the beginning there. Uh, before it splits off into the cars and trucks only. Coming around the corner and uh, just heard screeching tires look behind me and the guy that was in the right hand lane or the lane next to me pretty much got T-boned into the side and driven into the guardrail. Missed me by eh, maybe 20 feet. So that was nice. Um, so, continuing the trek. All right, we're pretty close to our destination. We're about 15 miles away, and let me tell you, I'm in the country. Um, I mean, this isn't like Boonies country. There's civilization around, but for me, this is country. All I've been driving through for the past uh, good 15 20 minutes. Nice place, this Pennsylvania. Alright, so we're all loaded up, uh, it's the next day and we're going to see if we can trek down to Brad's shop. Trek didn't too 
too bad on the way down. It's 420 miles. We averaged uh, 21. 1,000 feet onto Mount Pisgah Road. It's the lady in the truck talking to me. Um, we averaged about 21 miles per gallon on the way down, and uh, we're going to see what we're going to get total with uh, all this weight in the back of the truck. So the truck's riding pretty good considering all the weight in the back. She's uh, she's a little bouncy, but perfectly acceptable, handleable, not a big deal. So I mean, I'm not doing 90, so um, we should be fine on the ride home. So we're going to head up to Brad's, we should be there in a couple hours. Maybe we'll see you then. Maybe we will. Who knows? I do have to say, the best thing in this truck. I love it. I love it. I love it. That little, right where my phone is, that little pad, that's a non-contact charger built into the truck. Is If you have an Android phone or something that has uh, non-contact charging, your not, you know, the, or contact charger, whatever the hell they call it, uh, you can just sit it right in there and uh, it charges. No cords. Cows! Moo! Moo! I have found the Amish. Can't see him. He's a mouse all over the place. There he is. I found him. Please turn next right. I am in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> More cows. I'm just going to where the lady in the box tells me to go. Turn left after two miles. I have no idea where I am. So just came back from, got out of Brad's shop. Um, we were gonna make a video, but Please lots of talking about right. all kinds of different stuff and time kind of got away from us. I still have a five hour drive ahead of me. So uh, unfortunately no video, we just got a picture. <laughs> so that'll probably be up on Brad's Facebook page. But Turn cool guy. After a quarter of a mile. Obviously, I've met him before, but checked out his new shop, uh, the garage shop. So now he has to change his name. And uh, saw his 13. Looks a little bit better than mine. Just slightly better, though. Mine's going to look better when I'm done. And uh, hung out for a while. So now, off for a five hour drive home. So we'll see you when we get everything out. Okay. Um, Maybe a little dark here, you might not be able to see me real well. Maybe if I lean forward. Woo, look at that. Um, we're home, took about an eight hour drive, so an extra five hours after the, from Brad's house. Made it home, uh, truck handled everything fine. Perfectly acceptable ride. Uh, this truck is actually pretty comfortable for an eight hour drive. Um, you know, my back isn't hurting or anything like that. Compared to my service van, I mean, that thing beats the living crap out of me. So heading down, we had um, 410 miles, and we did 21, uh, 21 and change on the gas mileage, 90% highway. From Brad's house to my house is 290 miles. I tracked that with the fuel gauge, and we're getting uh, 20.9. So we lost about a mile per gallon uh, with 1,500 pounds of weight in the truck. So that ain't bad at all. So, um, this is going to sit out here tonight, it's 10.30, and tomorrow after work, uh, we'll start bringing her in the house. Okay, so it's the next day. So now all your stuff here, it's going to make it down there. And the pain in the ass is, is this bulkhead was added later in the life of the house. So basically what they did is just dug down and sat the cast steps there and bolted it to the foundation. Problem is I have a low, a lower ceiling in the shop than, sta uh, than standard newer houses, so I have a hell of a step here, which is about a good uh, you know, foot, foot and a half or so. So we gotta go down there, and I'm all by my lonesome. So some of this stuff I can carry. The bed might give me a little bit of trouble. I do have the engine hoist, and I have the remnants of the ramp that I used to get the mill down there. So I might be able to just do that. We'll try it by myself, but most of the stuff I can carry. Uh, the only thing that I can't lift on by myself is that bell housing and the actual bed. So the headstock will unbolt, tailstock will unbolt, motor I can carry carriage 
uh, saddle, whatchamacallit, underdrive, chip pan, foot, lead screw, and all the covers are wrapped up in there, gearboxes in, a, in the actual back of the truck. So let's start this. Okay, so time to huff this down into the cellar there. Uh, sunlight might be uh, reflecting off my dome a little bit here. So, a couple of quick tips, just so you don't end up with three Adam's apples. Uh, always lift with your back. Don't use your legs. You don't want to blow out a knee or anything. You want to use your back muscles. That's what they're there for.
Okay. So I'm gonna get it coming along. I'm gonna hook this. I have the ramp set up, and uh, I had a fence post to tie to. Well, that's pretty much the way we got the mill down. So give me a minute. All right, we got pretty much everything down cellar, except for the bed. Not the smartest way to do it, but I couldn't get anybody to come over in short, this short notice. Um, and it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I wanted to get everything out of the truck that I can. That bed is just it's too big for me to handle by myself. Um, so I have to get a couple of guys to help me out with that. I, I can lift it up, I can lift up one end. Uh, that's not an issue, it's just the, the length and awkwardness of it. I'm, you know, I'm gonna need somebody to stabilize it. Uh, what I might actually do is just have them help me get it out of the truck and onto the ground here, and then um, I can I can strip it, <laughs> strip it on the ground here, and uh, then bring it in once it's all cleaned out. That way they don't have to drag it outside again. Okay, so here's the headstock. So you got a one, two, three, four, four speeds plus back air, so a total of eight speeds. Uh, nothing to see here. The gears look good. They're not worn. They're not worn to a point. They look they look pretty good. Uh, headstock spins. It's a little tight, but I was expecting that. And then the other good thing is, well, probably not anymore because it spilled out when I moved it. But there was still oil in these cups, so that's a good sign. Uh, give me a hammer. We have the belts to measure for length. This is a three-jaw chuck here. That's a motor starter, because this was, or is, three phase. This is an Aloris AXA tool post. There's an Aloris BXA tool post here. This is the underdrive cone. Everything spins nice. Here's the actual apron. Uh, nothing really crazy to talk about in there. That also still had oil in it does have the thread dial. This here is a Westinghouse single horse three phase motor. We'll figure out what we're going to do with that. Whether we're going to go with single phase or three phase with the VFD. Not quite sure yet, but either way we'll probably keep that motor because that sucker is pretty damn cool. Tail stock. That's a cover for the bell housing. Uh, the bell housing is over there. This is the carriage. Now these weren't adjusted right on there and I can see here and on the other side uh, where the brass is worn like the brass itself was rubbing. Now it does have some chewy chewy right here. Kind of uh, normal for a, a lathe like this. Um, could possibly have come from a school. I don't know does not have a taper attachment. Let me flip this over and tell you about, show you the wear I was talking about. So here, this side looks fine. This side looks normal. Okay, I can, a little ridge there, nothing, nothing major. 
this side here. You can see the brass here and here worn and shiny like it was dragging on that side of the bed and same thing over here you can see it worn and shiny here all right and if you look right here that's all scoring like something got stuck under this bed and so as far as wear goes I mean we got some I don't think it'll be that much of an issue I mean, a lot of people talk about wear and, uh, you know, harp on it, but in all honesty, you know, we're not, I'm not, I'm not making ridiculously accurate pots. I'm not making things that need to hold, you know, 10 tolerances. So, I mean, for me, it should be fine. And as far as this gear in here, you know, we look pretty good, we look pretty good in there. Okay. And, uh, our screw has some wear, obviously normal. Uh, the foot now some of this stuff is gray because uh, Kevin had started a restoration on this and uh, then he found a Victor lathe and was able to pick that up at a really good price and then pass this one on to me now I did pay him for it obviously I'm not gonna tell you what I paid for it maybe at the end I will once this comes out this is an 8 inch four jaw chuck back plate doesn't match so I'll have to make a new one this is a box of all Allura's tool holders. There's AXA's and BXA's in here. I'll tell you that for what I paid for the lathe, these two holders and those two posts alone would probably even it out. He also had bought the book and the felt kit. So some of this is going to be pertinent to mine and some of it is not because this is a single tumbler so it's a little bit different than the rest of the lays so um, you know we'll go into the gearbox clean everything up and these are all the the doors and the one the last piece here chip pan lead screw and the switch so we have all the parts we have some wear that we're gonna have to deal with uh, it would probably be a good candidate to have a bed regrind on it but that's just way too out of my league um, cost wise just the cost of a bed regrinding and then you gotta have everything re-scraped in and everything built up uh, at this point is just is just too it, it, it's too much um, this isn't going to be just a spit and polish. We're going to go through this. If anything's broken, we're going to replace it. We're going to fix it. Uh, we're going to strip this down to bare castings. We're going to putty out and smooth out castings. We're going to get this thing looking pristine. And then we're going to set it up and we'll see what kind of tolerances we can hold with it. Uh, also, we got a couple other goodies from my buddy Kevin. We got uh, some end mills, hammer, some stainless stock, some aluminum and a little Albrecht chuck which for whatever reason is on this little stub arbor with the flats in it in a drill bushing and it goes all the way through it's a little it's got a little rough spot that might have to be taken out of there and I, I don't know if you guys can see and there's a hole all the way through it I don't I don't get what that's all about I don't I really don't understand that but it was obviously used for something and when you tighten this, the flats line up. So, I don't know. We'll definitely be able to put to, that to use. I'll put an arbor on this and uh, we can use it in the mill to hold our smaller stock or our smaller drill bits. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And this is going to be a long series. And we're going to show the entire breakdown, the entire rebuild, the entire reassembly. Um, and we'll do some cleaning and some painting. So, uh, while well, you guys get to see some cleaning and some painting, I'll have to do all the painting and the cleaning. But uh, other than that, we'll see you on those videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this one.